Well, four days on, and the anger over that decision, that crazy decision to hand Daniel Andrews the nation's highest honour, is still being met with, with outrage. There was a poll again in the Herald Sun this afternoon uh, that shows 96% of people who bothered to re reciprocate that poll uh, said that he should not have been awarded that award. In Victoria, you only have to talk on Talkback Radio to realise the anger is palpable, let alone how the rest of the country has reacted. Well, if you're like me, you're as baffled by this decision to recognise Dan Andrews as I am, there's now something you can actually do. There's a petition that was launched yesterday to strip Daniel Andrews of what is a virtual knighthood. You know, Sir Daniel Andrews. Joining me now to discuss is the man who's launched this petition, Victorian Nationals leader Peter Walsh. Peter, good to see you again. What prompted the idea of the petition. Good evening, Steve. So, as your introduction said, a lot of people very unhappy. Uh, we want this, this petition is to petition the Governor-General to actually withdraw that award. So, yes, we can all vent, but we need actually an action, which is why we've done what we've done. Uh, a litany of broken promises, deception as a Premier for, for a decade, uh, and we don't believe he deserves that particular award. Started started with, you know, when he first got elected, he spent $1.3 billion not to build a road and so on. I called it on Monday pathetic. I think I was being rather kind. Um, can the petition actually uh, achieve anything? I mean, if you got enough signatories to the petition, would the Governor-General have to take any notice? Well, he doesn't have to, but, he, but if there is enough people signed, I believe it would be his role to actually make sure he does take some notice. There has been people in the past who have done things wrong that have had their awards taken away. Uh, I don't think there was enough scrutiny put to this particular case. If you look at people that normally get these awards, it's a two, three, four year process. This was done in less than 12 months. That, to me, smacks of uh, political interference to make sure it was put through quickly. As I was saying before, if you go through his career, it's broken promise after broken promise. There must be no new taxes uh, and, cha and increased charges here in Victoria. We now have 55 new taxes and increased charges. Uh, half of those are on property, which is one of the reasons we have a housing crisis and a rental crisis in Victoria. And the most recent example would be the Commonwealth Games, effectively a hoax before the 22 election to say that regional Victoria was going to benefit from having the Commonwealth Games in the regions and post-election that's gone so why would someone like former Premier Andrews get an award for deceiving Victorians and leaving us in a huge debt hole that will take generations to pay off? The citation Peter mentioned health policies which is pretty uh, ironic given that you know Victorians were locked up for 262 days but the number of people who died the failed hotel quarantine scheme over 800 deaths and Daniel Andrews appeared before an in so-called inquiry uh, and he told that inquiry he couldn't remember who made the decision to hire the security firm that was put in charge of hotel quarantine. How the hell can you have a citation mentioning health policies and hand out the highest award that you can get in Australia as a civilian? Well, and I watched that, uh, the Coates inquiry, Steve, and I think from memory... The Premier said 27 times that he couldn't recall. You don't have the roles he's had through his time in politics and not be able to remember what you've done. I think that was just a, a sham inquiry in reality. And uh, as far as the health system goes, uh, with the debt the government here in Victoria has, they're cutting funding to health. And as a, a regional MP, we are staring down the barrel of huge cuts in regional health where people will have to drive for two hours to get health services in the future because they're going to merge hospitals cut services in regional Victoria all because they haven't managed the economy well and they just cannot manage money and they certainly haven't been able to manage the major projects in here in Victoria that have blown out by something like $40 billion. That is enough to spend every a million dollars on every kilometre of highway in Victoria and still have $70 billion, $17 billion left over to fix the health mess. Something really smells about this. I mean, Jeff Kennett made the point that he waited, I think, four or five years after leaving office uh, as a Premier who you'd have to say made Victoria a better place than when he took over. I mean, you only have to be as old as you and me, Peter, to remember what it was like under Joan Kerner. So he made the state better and still had to wait four or five years. Uh, Andrews has made the state clearly a worse place to live and it happens within months. 
do we have any clue as to who and that's, who actually nominated him? Well, no, you don't. And and with all those awards, you never know who who nominated someone. But as I said before, it normally takes three to four years to work through the process of from a nomination to the to the scrutiny to the checking of referees for an award to actually be finally given. Uh, this is done in under twelve months since the premier left. It just smacks of political intervention in what is supposed to be a a, a fair process. I don't think it was fair at all. And I think the fact that there are so many people aggrieved uh, since we launched this petition, there's there's over nearly 8,000 signatures already, and it's only just started to get going. The more signatures we can get, uh, they will go to the Governor-General with a covering letter from myself, asking him to review the decision and withdraw it. I'd urge our audience to sign it. Uh, the opposition leader, John Basuto, was asked about the petition today. Here's what he had to say. I generally don't sign petitions. That's been my practice over many years as, a, as an MP and someone involved in public life. I generally don't sign them. But Peter is totally justified in wanting to pursue this on behalf of his constituents. You generally, generally don't, but will you this time? No, I won't be signing the petition, but I don't generally. Why wouldn't he sign it? Well, I haven't spoken to him about it, Steve, but I will be lobbying John to make sure that he does sign it. I, I think every Victorian that feels aggrieved about this award and particularly is just aggrieved by the way the state is at the moment with the record debt, the challenges that we have with blowout in major projects, the challenges we're going to have in our health system with the way they're going to slash and burn our health system, particularly in regional Victoria. I'll be urging John to reconsider and actually sign this petition. Uh, all my... National Party colleagues will be most definitely signing the petition. Uh, I've been inundated, our office in the Chuk has been inundated with people making calls as to how they actually go about signing it. And, I, and when we get all those signatures, as I said, we'll send it off to the Governor-General with a covering letter saying, please, uh, can you re-examine this decision and we'll be asking him to actually withdraw this honour that the Premier was, had bestowed on him. Peter Walsh, thanks for that. I'll be signing that petition tomorrow. I've got to say, and I won't ask Peter to comment on this, but seriously, John Pasuto is completely out of touch if he doesn't think he should be signing that. 